Hello and welcome to Console Shock Retro Mom Gaming Chat with me, Trev and Stu, and it's episode 50. Hi there, Trev, how are you? Just amazed at how many episodes have managed to bang out, mate. 50, 50. How about you? 50 I'm... entire yeah. releases. Yeah, you please don't go and listen to the first ones. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Have you done oh, that? Have you ever man. gone back and listened to them? We are shit, really. <laughs> <laughs> Not that good now, but, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> gone from deadpan to just pan. Pan, <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's, it's, it's the measurement, but, yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's weird. We started this um, with the, the... We actually made... Well, OK, we're going to go right back to the start. You mm. put a shout-out on Facebook that you were looking to get more involved on uh, in, in, in YouTube YouTube, yeah. For the shop, M and M Games, you're working in in Croydon. That's right. For a game shop. Obviously, that's now kind of evolved into Play Nation Games. Um, and I, I was a fan of your YouTube videos. How creepy does that sound? <laughs> you do pick up videos, didn't you? And I was like, I didn't know there was you. Were, you existed in, you know, there was. A, you know, I didn't even. I know there was many retro game shops in London. In fact, you were the only one that I really stumbled across. Hmm. I thought, well, I can actually physically go to one of these bloody places because you're not that far from me. Um, and yeah, I went to visit you, and um, you said, yeah, let's let's work together. And that was when we had Al with us. Um, yeah, he got deported, didn't he? Poor he lad. Deported. Yeah, he wanted to go here. He we did two episodes, and he moved to Canada. So that's scared him pretty bad, <laughs> I guess. Two episodes. And yeah, then in 2015, well, that was 2013, wasn't it? That we did the, the mm. video version of the show, and it was just too much work. And then Al left, which kind of killed that. And we kind of jumped in again on it on um, 2015 or, or tw- uh, 2014, I think, is when we kicked, we kicked it off. Could just look at the dates that we released stuff, but that's too much admin, isn't it? So exactly. Exactly. 2014. Uh, and yeah, here we are, 50 bloody episodes, eh? No, it's amazing. Amazing. So one thing I actually do want you to chat about quickly, just, to, just to, okay, yeah, 50 episodes, have covered that now, great. You, you asked me earlier... Actually, earlier today, you were like, so what's happened to CEX and their postage? <laughs> yeah, I did, you? yeah. Well, I didn't really know what it was like before, because I was one of the owners of PlayNation Games, obviously, so I didn't really buy many games from um, um, CEX. You kept all the good stuff to yourself, didn't, didn't you, in the shop? Well, exactly, anything came in, yeah, that was going into my collection. Yeah. So, with, with CEX, I thought, oh, you know, I want to get a few games from there. And what they do now is they charge £1.50 for, for every game you get. And I know the reason they do it, because each game, they don't have a centralised warehouse where all the games are kept, I imagine. They all come from each and every shop. So if you order 10 games, and then they all come from, you know, Aberdeen, from Canterbury, from London, from Bevan, wherever they come from, they've all got to be posted sort of separately to you. So it sort of makes sense. But I I think the other day I was going... I like going through CEX and sort of finding sort of classic games like the 360, the PS2 that are like little ones like oh yeah I remember wanting to yeah. play that I used to like that one they're only like 50p a pound they're quite cheap and I thought what's up by the other day Virtual Fighter 5 um, Virtual Tennis and the 360 Be- keep threatening to get that don't, don't, I, don't I can't find it anywhere it's impossible 50p <laughs> I know but they don't they don't give any money for it so no one trades it in I'm not actually seeing that in shops like we talked about this about a billion times it's kind yeah. of an, an ongoing, can't find it it's kind I, of an ongoing joke isn't it between us but I found it in one place but the, the disc was uh, they had the wrong disc it's, it's become obscure isn't it that because um, I remember when the 360 came out and about f- six months later that was the most common second hand game because it was it was the early stages of people you know, exactly. trading in Xbox 360 games because it was a new con- console. Mm. That one was just getting traded in to, to buggery, and it, you could just get there was like ten copies of that, and maybe one of you know I don't know what other games came out like like Cameo or something. Uh, but now because the game is probably quite old, well it is just one of the first. It's a launch game. But it's it's um, old. It's not very good, and no one will give you any money for it. But I actually I actually want, want to own it. Yeah, so, which is a little bit <laughs> odd. It's um, the one fever game that's hard to get, and it's kind of quirky as well because it was made by Dice. Mm. Um, they didn't make the, the FIFA 06 on the PS2 and the Xbox, the main version of that game. But they, uh, Dice made the 360 port. It's the only football game they've ever made, or sports game, I think. If you don't count like Pinball Dreams and all that on the Amiga when they got started at the very, very beginning. 
Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just it's missing a ton of stuff. Um, on the, well, they had to quickly knock it out for the launch. It, it's, it's, exactly, yeah. So it's, it's quite quirky. Um, it could do with its own little history thing, but yeah, it hasn't aged well. But it's actually oh. hard to get now. Um, Talk, not- talking about history things, we've got a special guest. Yeah. 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 We don't want to get too deep into CEX, do we? That's a whole. We've already done an episode. No, I don't know like talking about CEX. Go and play Nation <laughs> Games in Croydon. That's probably got. That's where you got to go. Go and see Dan. Yeah. Uh, oh. Not you, Dan. The other Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have a special guest, and it is one of our favourite YouTubers. It is Dan oh. Ibbotson. Hey, hey, hey. How's yes, it going? Hello. Hey, hey, DJ hi. Slope. Uh, yeah, all going very well. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me on. So welcome to the 50th episode, Dan. You must be feel honoured. Yeah, absolutely. The big 5-0. I'm big there. 5-0. I'm there. They fly by. But what are your thoughts on CEX? Just to, just to we lead into the main uh, of the guy? I haven't really got any thoughts on them. Uh, it's worth going there to pick up let me think about this. So one generation old. So it's quite good yeah, to go there yeah. if you buy on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii, yes, especially. Like you can get some wicked Wii games in there at yeah, yeah. pretty much normal prices. Um and I did notice when I went in there recently, because uh, I saw the Mega Drive collection on the PS3, because um, weirdly I don't own the PS3. I've got the Xbox 360 one, but not the PS3. And um, it did have a big, big label on the front that said reprinted cover. And I'm oh, like, oh, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're in the right thing now. That's better. That's better. But, um, we'll have to see if that's uh, that's the case across the board. But you know, yeah. um, My local one's got quite a decent little uh, retro collection, actually. They're not bad now, are they, for that? No. I mean, it's a bit of a potluck on if you mail order that stuff because you don't know if you can get a battered old, especially if it's like a NES game or something. Where the, the, the I've never, I've never mailed order any, anything from CEX. Yeah, really? You just no. literally dive in. So what is it? they got a decent selection then near to you? Fairly, fairly. Uh, annoyingly, it's really it, they, they put it behind this big like, big glass case thing, um, and they've got like one Mega Drive game because they're the ones I'm primarily looking at, obviously. So one Mega Drive game yeah, facing yeah. forward, but then all the spines, so you don't know how much any of the games are. You'd think yeah, they'd be clever they'd and put the, on, the yeah. prices on the spine so then you yeah. can see. Because I, I can't be bothered to say how much is Green Dog. Nah, I'm all right, actually. Like, you know. <laughs> oh, well, you always have to describe it because it's obviously some 21 year old behind the counter. So you've got to say, uh, can that game in that black box with the Sega logo, can you get that for me? Because I don't know what the hell this stuff is from Adam. The, the last <laughs> time I went there, actually, not not the one local to me, one up in, um, I can't remember which one I went to, maybe Tunbridge Wells? I can't yeah. remember. But anyway, they said to me, uh, I recognise you off YouTube. And I went, oh, yeah. And I was generally wearing a Slopes Game Room hat. Oh, really? I like, yeah. I was like, oh, it's... Um, <laughs> That'll help. It's, uh, I was like, yes, yeah, uh, Slopes Game Room. No, nah, no, nah, not from Slopes Game Room. And I just walked out before they said that other name. And I was like, all right, that's it. I'm getting out of here. Larry <laughs> Bondi. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if we lose Larry, then, you know, there's a spare, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, like, you're like, like you could be almost like the Mike, the Mike Matai of, uh, like, to, uh, to his uh, angry video game nerd you could position yourself like that i guess maybe it's the other way around maybe he's mike matai to you that's it that's what i think that's what i think yeah <laughs> so do, do you, is that your main <laughs> system then to collect uh to pick up uh old games for then yeah i mean i'm not genuinely not the biggest uh game collector i really am not i mean uh, i put up a shelf literally yesterday uh, yeah. so i could start putting on my japanese mega drive games which is my new thing that i'm starting to collect and i've got 14 so i haven't got that many yeah yeah um, but i'm starting to collect them um it's just it is what it is isn't it you know i mean i i, I don't feel attached to anything on my retro shelf or yeah. my big retro cabinets um because almost everything my dreamcast i bought all of those when i when i had my dreamcast so i feel good i feel connected to those but everything else I just picked up randomly at boot fairs and it was all purchased at a time when I didn't have the console set up. Um, so yeah. I'm like, oh, wicked, look at all these new games. In the box they go, in the attic, and I'd forget about what I'd had and what I didn't have. And then before you know it, I've got... I, I, the other day I realised I have two copies of all the mainline Sonic games. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've got, nice. I, I had three copies of Echo the Dolphin. It's just because I kept buying these games, you know, I'll do a review on it. I mean, oh, wicked, I do want to get this for that review or whatever. And then I realised I've already got it. So now I've got them all, all on my shelf. I'm starting to collect one by one and, you know, yeah, yeah. attached to the things that I purchase. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I've done go. the same thing. Like I've got my Mega Drive collection is one of the bigger ones. I've got about 140 games. Wow. I'd actually do forget what I have. So yeah, I've bought yeah. Like, like, you know, you've bought Echo Dolphin like, like, about nine times. And, like, <laughs> it's like, I've had to sort of trade it back in again and all that sort of stuff. But, um, I mean, looking here, I reckon I've got maybe, uh, including the Japanese ones, maybe 
40, 50 games, Mega Drive wise. Yeah, cool. I was my biggest collection, but um, it's yeah. an easy one to do in the in the UK because it was the number one sixteen bit console. Really, um, yes. those yes. are the Nintendo fanboys. It, it really was. Um, it might have been all over the world if it did better in Japan because it's just that that really got the Nintendo. Well, did it? Did the SNES beat it? I'm not so sure it did. Um, the sales figures are dodgy on the Mega Drive, aren't they? They reckon it's between yeah. 30 and 40 ish million. There's not like, you know, the, the, there's no definitive number. It might be more than that. Something like that. It's something like that. Um, it's, it's annoying as well collecting Japanese games because some games, like you, you what, what would like Robocop versus Terminator be? That's like a 20 quid game in the yeah, UK. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You try buying the Japanese one, it's like a 200 pound game. <laughs> yeah. Batman Forever like, is a big one that I've heard about. It Batman is. Forever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to get Splatterhouse 2 and 3. I, I'm mm. really, really loving Splatterhouse 3 at the moment. I've been playing that quite a bit, but I want to get the Japanese one, and that's like a 150 quid game. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because like, like, the Japanese library is actually smaller than ours. Um, it is. It is. Four 400 ish games we had about nearly 600 yeah um yeah. And they didn't get we got things like um international superstar soccer deluxe um actually the not even america got that we we it was just in europe and brazil we got uh, the premier manager games we got the premier manager games for, for get a football <laughs> team i guess um yeah. and there was a few other oddball games um but then they got there were some others that they got i mean one that i really would love i need to pick up a copy of is um rainbow islands no oh, um yes. we didn't we didn't get that um, which is odd because we got about every a billion versions of that. Yeah, game. Yeah, we got every other version going, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mars Sister version, obviously the Amiga and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and there's also a Monster Island, a Monster Island, a Monster Layer, or Monster World Four. Uh, I've got the Japanese one of that. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. We didn't get that at all. I've, uh, I've only recently bought that. I haven't even put that in my machine yet. Actually, that one. So yeah. 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 We're, we have like a Mega Drive collectors group, and someone said on there, like, oh, I'm really excited about collecting Japanese games. I'm sure it's going to be a crazy, like, diverse library. And I sort of said, oh, no, it's actually, there's actually less Japanese Mega Drive games. They're like, really? They're like, yeah, there's only, there's about 200 less. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> they were expecting it to be like the Saturn or something, where we got like, you know, 300 games. And in Japan, there's like a thousand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it a hell of a lot of dating sims, isn't there? Like, yes. a crazy amount. But yeah. also, I really want to get the, uh, I'd love to get the um, uh, the Sega Ages games uh, for the Sega yes. There's yeah. beautiful, mostly arc arcade perfect, almost almost arcade perfect versions uh, on those Sega Saturns. I'd love to start collecting those. But I don't really own any Japanese Sega Saturn games. Maybe that's something I'll look into maybe yeah um i'm kind of um i, I love the sega set and i had one when, when it was mm -hmm. i got it really late i got it in 98 um so it was right. literally on its deathbed uh but that was literally the point when like i think it was actually in cash converters my dad grabbed it for me it was like 50 quid right. and to me that was still that was amazing because i obviously you know followed it from the from day one when it was 399 quid so it was mm -hmm. like a thing that i dreamed about owning a few years only about three years earlier I could have pick up in bloody crack converters for fifty quid, and um, but I loved it when I got it. I um, got a big bundle yeah. of games with it, um, and yeah, even though, even when I got a PlayStation, um, again I got that quite late, um, about a few months, only a few months after the Saturn. Um, I still played it loads, uh, and it kind of usurped my N sixty four, which I was, which was my main console before that. Right, um, right. So that obviously goes to say a lot. I mean, even things like some of the ports on there, I really enjoyed, like like uh, Wipeout and Wipeout twenty ninety seven. Um, sure. I, I really enjoyed the out back in the day. Bloody love that game. Yeah, it was the Saturn version. It was the first one I played. Uh, I, I, it was later I played the PlayStation one. So I didn't really have a big bias of, oh, this is going to be some crap port. It's actually a pretty good port. Um, it's a little bit slower. And sure. it's, um, the frame rate is, is a bit lower. But it's still it's, it's perfectly playable. Just makes you think if they build it from the ground up for the Saturn, um, it might have been like, you know, maybe it could have made something that looked that zoomed better than the sort of PlayStation version. But yeah. It's interesting. I'm not sure we got the full potential of it of the sand, really. No, no it was too soon, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it got dominated by the PlayStation back in the day. I didn't have one uh, until my friends moved on to. How did it work? I think they moved on because they wanted to start but getting saving money for a Dreamcast. Oh, right, well, yeah. that. But anyway, they sold me yeah. all their, their Sega Saturn games for like a pound a pop. Oh wow. And, um, <laughs> gutted because i sold them on for oh, quite a lot quite a lot more but only yeah, in the last yeah. few years basically I, I i sold the majority of my collection and a lot of that was in the last three or four years but it was because again i just i didn't even know what i had anymore and i hadn't seen them for so long my mega cd collection my dream uh, uh gamecube and saturn all went within the last oh my god years. so i'm 
gonna now I'm starting to collect again, but yeah, yeah. As I want to start doing it myself, I think I'm gonna buy start getting Japanese games on all of these systems because yeah. it's uh it's just something fresh and new for me to collect. Um uh, and I also had a massive Master System collection, which I sold. Not, nah, not massive, maybe fifty games. So well that's quite a big chunk of it though, isn't it? I mean, it's actually yeah. about a couple hundred games in total. Mm-hmm. I mean, it had a long lifespan, or really frigging long lifespan in Brazil, which is kind of still going, technically. Yeah, isn't it like the most <laughs> best-selling console of all time? It's mental. I love yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's so good, amazing. It's got the longest lifespan of any games console ever, because I think they, if you it, if you count the fact that Tech Toy is still releasing, like, you know, 1,001 little handheld versions of it, yes. it's still... I'd love to get one of those. They're so bloody hard, aren't they, to import? Yeah. Because yeah. they're official, like, Sega devices, aren't they? You know, they're sort they of sub licensed to Tech tech toy but they're officially you know let's do it they, they do a better job than any of these bloody at games you know p- people and all that do like yes yeah, so, oh yes well isn't it great that um sega have moved on from at games now for that new mega drive mini yeah i mean what's happening with that have they, have they announced anything more they had a bit of an announcement didn't they well they showed it um and it's kind of dropped off since then i ask every time i go up to sega <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got nothing to say on it, but um, I'm excited because uh, you know, at games aren't a part of it anymore. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Sega have the potential to make the very best out of all of the minis because I haven't got no interest in the minis. I've got a, a SNES mini over there. I played. I put it in once. I was like, I'm not really feeling this. Yeah, yeah. And then I turned it off. I mean, it's not because the games aren't good because they obviously are. There's something some of the greatest games ever made of the yeah. system, but. There needs to be more. And the thing is, both Sega and Nintendo have done these incredible compilation things. Like, you know, from back on the Wii U, they had these, those, what was it, those NES Megamix and SNES Megamix, where oh, they were yeah, like, yeah. cool little mini games and things. Sega did it remix. recently on their, yeah, that's it. They yep. did, uh, Sega did it on their Mega Drive collection for the PS4, where it had like cool little mini things that you could do. Start adding things like that, like achievements and things like that, mm-hmm. into a mini console. It wouldn't be hard to implement that. Um, and that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. And I'd make you want to. That'd make collectors want to get it more. I think. If they'd yeah. Around with things like that. Um, yeah, because I've actually got. Um, I bought recently actually NES Remix Part One and Two for the Wii U. You can't actually okay. buy a physical co- copy of it in the UK. In America, you you could. Which is bloody annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, it's just a download. It's quite cheap. It's like for both, but for both parts, it's like fifteen quid or something. I'd recommend oh, yeah. grabbing it. Because obviously they've just shut down the bloody Wii store today, so the Wii U one's probably not going to be that much that f- long for this world. I don't think is it, is it maybe another year, and they'll be shutting that down. How many how many exclusive Wii U downloadable titles are there? I mean, you had the um, uh, the Donkey Kong Mario game, didn't you? Yeah, well there's, well, there's quite a lot. I mean, if you go on the store, I think um, there's a bit there's a decent. Certainly, I think I think all the Nintendo developed titles are actually on there to download. And there's a lot of like the stuff that was also on Xbox Live um, and Xbox Live Arcade and Place and PSN. I mean, I bought like um, DuckTales uh, remastered. That was like yeah, three pounds yeah. on the Wii U store. So I sod it. I'll just grab it. Um, like Mighty Number no. Nine. Like you could buy, you could buy a physical disc of that um, for the Wii U. Um, and yeah, and also the virtual console games. Um, so yeah. we don't know what's going to happen with those. With the, I mean, Nintendo are drip feeding them out, aren't they? On the Switch. Yeah, um, I, I don't like what they're doing with the Switch. No, I, 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 the Switch is genuinely one of my favorite systems but i don't like their virtual console uh, i mean i, I was never I, I never really got like everyone losing their mind over the virtual console like, oh my god i can't buy mario for the nes for the 15th time yeah, yeah. Pound, like, or five pound whatever it was i'm like yeah okay i don't care <laughs> i can't buy it like, i'm genuinely fine not just because i own a nes car yeah, over yeah. there just like, i own it so many times already um uh, I, I actually prefer the fact that they don't have it because it forces companies uh, to to release mega, uh, you know, uh, compilations. Yeah, which are better value for money, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And I'd much rather own. I haven't got it yet, but I'm getting the um, Atari one come through the post. It's like 150 Atari games on one cartridge. Oh yeah, the flashback thing that's just yeah. Coming out, isn't it? yeah. Um, I mean, they do take the piss sometimes. I mean, I've got Mega Man X Volume One, and then you have to buy Volume Two, and it's like, come on, these could easily fit on a cartridge. <laughs> yeah, these are like mm-hmm. two two me- megabyte Char- games. Charge me ten pound more, and I. I'll buy them on one cartridge, stupid, but you know, and it's the same as it. Um, I can never say it right, Syak games or the, the Syak like shmup games or something that, oh, that's right, yeah. two as well. And um, oh, actually, I've got Kunio Kun as well, which is really cool because that means you can genuinely play Double Dragon one, two, and three on your Switch now and and Renegade. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we had the, the beat em up collection as well, which is more sort of, yeah, I've got that. Yeah, yeah. The belt action, or whatever it's called, with um, Captain Commando. There's probably more I'm trying to see, but. I mean, the Switch is the best console for this, isn't it? For the sort of retro compilations. Oh, yeah, the major stuff on the handheld. 
I mean, it will get better when, like, if they just open up the virtual console, just the whole... I mean, at one point on the Wii, it got to be a couple of thousand games you could buy off it, I think. Yeah. Um, if it was, if you got that with your for free with your Nintendo Switch Online, it'd be a no bra- no brainer. Absolutely, it'd be a no brainer. Yeah, for, be, you get like two new games a month. And it's a, yeah, like that, that's games. how many. That's how, that's how many PlayStation Four games they give away each month, and they're like full brand, well, not brand new, but like a year or two old games. And you're only drip feeding games that came out in the seven, like, not seventies, but in the eighties. Like, come on, sort it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And you got Game Pass now on the Xbox, where you got like you know three hundred odd games instantly. Yes, for, for eight quid. So it's just like you know, mm-hmm. there's absolutely no, there's absolutely no contest. They're just so far behind. And a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, well that's just what Japanese companies are like. They don't want to do their own thing." Sega were Japanese, and they pioneered putting the internet on a console. Yeah, in like the nineties. So yeah, yeah making you know, okay, they weren't the first with CDs. That was well, that was NEC, so a Japanese com- company. But mm-hmm. they, um, it's like Adam Korolik sums it up best. Sega were just like kind of just. If there was a half, half-assed, half-baked idea, they'd be like, "Yep, yeah, let's do it. Let's release yeah, it." Oh, no, shame, no, no one like that one. Okay, f- forget it. We'll release another one. <laughs> it's just kind of way you know, piled <laughs> add-ons on top of add-ons, you know. Um, but yeah, it's uh, well, it's good that we've got another Sega fanboy because we can reminisce about, you know, Ooh, yes, and not have all those all Nintendo people getting in the way. I like Nintendo, but if I, you know, if I if I had a company that I wanted to sort of instantly shoot back to the top of the pile of all of every of video games right now it probably would be sega I it's think. hard because um the sega that we have now is obviously different and i think that's fine i actually think that's a good thing because if let's say you know like you know sega all of a sudden they're on par with your sony's and your nintendo's and microsoft's whatever and they were able to like do new things with things like streets of rage and golden axe and all of these classic classic franchises outrun yeah yeah whatever i don't think they'd be the same league see all those games that we remember and we love most of them not all of them but a lot of those games we remember and love are all very much arcadey experiences yeah that's right yeah new mindset Uh, Mm. i do think games are getting better and i think that the new mindset is the fact that if, if they released like something like Streets of Rage now and released it for 40 quid, people would be like scoffing up about the fact that, oh my God, Streets of Rage 40 quid, you can complete it in like three hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Know, a couple of hours. Um, you know, like they could be the top of their game making brand new versions of those sort of games as download. And I think that's what they're trying to do. You know, you've got Streets of Rage, I know it's not them making it, but Streets of Rage 4, um, they've got very competent people making that. You know, the same people that did the Dragon's Trap. Um, and hopefully that's just going to open the doorway to more and more. You know, Sonic Mania, that like you know, um, exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, and they, the- they, they put that down as a budget title. Like I reckon, if that was a forty fifty, everyone would have bought that anyway. But mm. um, yeah, I, mean, I, so. I kind of think Sonic Mania is basically what the the Sega Saturn Sonic would should have been. You yeah, know, that's probably. what they, they they pitched it as, didn't they originally? Yeah, that's what I mean, they wanted to make. I don't know if it'll be a launch, but uh, maybe the something in that first year. If, if if that Sonic game came out, Sonic had enough traction and popularity i mean i'll say i'll say it a lot but like you know in the 90s people would queue up overnight for a new sonic game when it came oh, out yes yeah, yeah um yeah. not anymore it's kind of a joke really you know sonic mania's <laughs> got a bit of respect back isn't it a little bit yeah absolutely and i, I quite like the fact that there's two camps because the 3d games they've got their they've got they have got their hardcore fans and it's crazy yeah. thing but there are people out there that preferred sonic heroes uh sonic heroes <laughs> sonic sorry sonic forces right over, yeah um Sonic Mania, and I'm like, whoa, that's crazy! You know, that I couldn't finish crazy. Sonic <laughs> Sonic Forces, and apparently it's a two hour game. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, fine, make as many 3D Sonic games as you want for the 3D fans, you know, and give us as many Sonic Manias and cool blue twists on games like that. That I, I'm happy that they make the two different types there, you know. I think we had two good Sonic 3D games. Well, well, if you wanted to list them all, well, I, I, I love Sonic Adventure. I, I love Sonic Adventure. I mean, everyone's like, "Oh, it's glitchy and it's age old." Yeah, but in 1998, it was freaking amazing. Oh my god, um, right. mind blowing! Yeah, juicing. I loved it. I think Music, the thing, everything. The thing that impressed me was like the texture quality. I remember that first mm-hmm. light level on the uh, uh, whatever that first level scored. I, I can't remember the top of my head. I don't mean the yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm just looking at, I used to just stand and look at like the sand and like the, the sort of wood te- <laughs> textures. I was like, oh my God, this looks amazing. Um, and yeah, and, and obviously, I know, you know what you mean, though. It happens every new generation, something like that happens. You have to like, whoa, just, just, just stop look at this. Look at yeah. This. Yeah, you know, when I, when I got my GameCube, I just kept stopping in Pikmin just to look at the fact that the water effect looks yeah, so it looks good. And... Was <laughs> yeah. good at that, wasn't it? The, the water, like some Samaria sunshine, really good water, but yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, and it was just and Sonic Adventure Two was good as well. Um, and then I probably would say probably Sonic Generations. Yeah, Generations last, is good. Yeah, um, but again, it's probably because it's half of it's a, a throwback to you know the older Sonic games bits in it. Um, I, you know what? Everyone hates um, hates on the what was the second one? You got the Black Knight. Yeah, Black Knight was second, and then you had the yeah. Yeah, Secret Rings, and then the Black Knight. I completed both of those games. Yeah. <laughs> I know that I hate it, and I haven't played them since I've completed them, but I do remember yeah. enjoying them. Shadow of the Hedgehog as well. That wasn't that one too bad. Everyone hates that as well. I, I'm not a fan of that one. People could get out of the fact he had a gun, wasn't it? And you'd like shoot was, things and all, all that it was stuff. Like, so when he turned into a werewolf. No, no that's, that's Sonic, Sonic Unleashed. 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 Yeah, Again, yeah. Sonic Unleashed is half a great game. Like half a brilliant... Oh, Sonic Colors is very good. I prefer Colors to Generation. That's um, kind of like sort of a real on rails kind of thing, wasn't it? Like, wasn't yeah, it? yeah. They kept they, the, the, what was it? They called it the Hedgehog Engine, I think it was. Yeah, like, yeah. From side to forward, side to forward. Um, yeah, I mean, no one ever talks about those PSP ones as well. I can't think what they're called. They're not heroes, are they? They're called Sonic Rivals. Gosh. Sonic Rivals, Rivals. Yeah, yeah, one and two. Um, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, and you had a we had a few oddball ones on the DS and. There was Sonic Pocket Adventure on the Neo Geo Pocket, which is actually really good. <laughs> I've never completed it, but I've, I mean, I've played it and I thought it was quite fun, yeah. Not, yeah. not on official hardware, sadly, but yeah, I've played that one. Yeah, probably the best handheld Sonic. I mean, I used to really like Sonic Chaos. I know it's mega easy and it's only about an hour long, but I really, really like like that. There's a beautiful um, looking, I say coming out, because most of these fan projects don't, but there's a beautiful looking Sonic Chaos uh, remake coming out. Uh, yeah, I played it, yeah, on the PC. Yeah, there's a demo of it, isn't there? It looks mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Um, there's also a fan project um, that's uh, taking the Sonic Advance game, basically just remaking Sonic Advance, but they're just pulling the camera back. Uh, so it's not like it was right zoomed in. So it's oh, right, yeah. up like half the screen, and it just looks like it plays really nicely. Because the Sonic Advance games, they're quite fun. Yeah. They're kind of in the spirit of the old ones. Um, Sonic 2 HD as well. That's another fan-made mm -hmm. project. That there was a couple great. of those, wasn't there? There was another one that was like a bit dirtier looking. And you saw like the, the the whatever his name is, Robotnik's machine just flying in the background. I can't think what that was called. But yeah. there was a rumor around it that had like a virus on it or something like that. So no one downloaded it. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a great way to get, get, your, get your name out there, is it? Yeah. It's but, there's a lot there at the moment. I, mean, like, there's more, I played uh, Mortal Kombat HD. As in the original Mortal Kombat. 1. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I haven't played it, but I, I do remember seeing that. Absolutely, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I don't know how they got. I don't know if they got actors to get in the old costumes, but they look exactly the same. Um, and there's like like the level, the stages are the same stages before. Except now you've got like the trees are blowing in the background, and you've got like yeah. birds flying around, and there's still the blood and the gore and everything. It's just, it's, it's like a two player only kind of demo. But yeah. um, I can imagine that will get shut down pretty quick uh, by by midway, especially as it's like. Mortal Kombat 11's coming out in 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 a uh, in April, um, mm -hmm. on the Switch actually. Funnily enough, uh, they're making a Switch yeah. version, which is awesome. That's probably what I'll buy it on. Uh, to be honest, I always will. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but God, I need to I need to put that. I need to put the old ones on the Switch, like one, two, and three. Um, well, one, two, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat three. That would be great as a little compilation. Um, so yeah, if you're listening midway, make that a special edition add on or something for eleven for the Switch. You know what, actually, one thing that they have yeah. to put on um, the Switch, OutRun 2006. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I love them. I, I think they're better than the um, the old OutRun. I, I love the original OutRun, of course. Yeah, yeah. Who runs are genuinely better games. It's got uh, the best I sequel really like ever. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's so, yeah. so good. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was heavily into that. Um, is it the 360 one that you they can't get anymore because of the Ferrari licensing or something like that? Yeah, it got it was that was great, wasn't it? Because the graphics got boosted up to 1080p, but yeah, yeah I, and it was like, I downloaded that. Yeah, you can still I think you still play it if, if you've got it, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't buy it anymore. Um, which is can annoying. you still download the file? Uh, if you've got a jailbroken um 360, I think people people have posted the file, yeah, or, or I mean, if, you, if you've like, if you've like downloaded it originally, yeah. Yeah, you can if it's in your like history of stuff you've bought. Yeah, you can download it again. Oh, that's good because I've just my, annoyingly my 360 didn't have the HDMI out. It just had like the. Yeah, oh, it was the older HDMI. one. Oh, well, that's yeah. still working. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> don't turn it on. <laughs> yeah, don't turn oh, it on. I, I got given a few 360s recently, and uh, that a lot of they've all got HDMI out, so I'm gonna just move on to one of them. 
but I want to make sure I can download Outrun first because that's that's the game, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've got a ton of like Xbox Live Arcade games. A lot of them are Sega ones, like Virtua Fighter Two and Daytona mm-hmm. USA and all that stuff. Um, um, isn't it Afterburner Climax? Can't get that anymore either. Yeah, that was like an online. Um, there was a one. There was one on like the PS3 as well that was like I know that was Ace Combat something. It was like a, a free right. on, PS3 online only thing, and there was like Soul Calibur Broken Swords, I think. Um, that was a that was a PS3 only on download thing, and you can't get that anymore. It's oh, kind of... the, um, it's got Pilgrim as well. Yeah, really, really beat him up. Turtles in Time reshelled. Um, you can't get that anymore. Uh, everyone slagged that off, but I really liked it. But can't can't get that anymore. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously at some stage, like I don't know what the infrastructure is like for Xbox Live. Whether the Xbox keeping the Xbox 360 portion of it eats into a lot of resources or it's just a couple of boxes in a corner that are just kept on yeah, to keep yeah. logging into it. I guess uh, so when that gets shut down, that'll be a pain. That'll be that'll be quite that'll be quite significant. Um can't see it happening for another two or three years. I guess they'll just they'll just make it they'll make an update for everyone's Xbox three sixties that, that you download and it basically makes it an offline only console. Which would be quite yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. But yes. I guess they'll carry living on the games because they're also making a lot of them backwards compatible. Well, I mean, I did that video, what is it, on the um, Xbox Live indie game service. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's gone now, isn't it? Yeah. Almost all of the games on there. I mean, luckily, most, actually, I say almost all, but a lot of them you can go find. They're just, they're over on Steam as well. Yeah. But um, so many are gone now, gone for good. Uh, Have you got them? Did you, like, get all the ones that you needed before? No, nah, no way. There was, there, oh, I can't remember the exact number, but there was possibly thousands. Really, yeah, you could be right there, yeah. Um, I, I have to go back on my video and look. Um, but yeah, 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 there, there was there was stupid amounts, and I mean, some of them I was discovering whilst making that video. So I was just like desperately trying to find anything, and I was just like, I've just got to use footage that I found on YouTube because I just cannot find the fucking yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And it sucked. <laughs> In yeah. fact, um, one of my next videos. When's this video going out? By the way, um, it'll probably be uh, what are we now? Big first week of Feb. So yeah, hi, it's first week of Feb to everybody watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we, it might beat me to it then, but I'll be announcing it by then. So I've just done the um, South Park, the History and the Games one, which is a new series one we'll do called the History and the Games. Where I look oh, at right, yeah. Like the the and, yeah. Whatever it may be, Simpsons, Turtles, anything. And then the, yeah. History and the Games. One of the ones I want to do is War of the Worlds. Um, so the History and the Games all related to War yeah. of the Worlds. And I don't know if you know much about War of the Worlds, but one of the things they do in that is they always get like a famous spoken voice to do the normal to believe in the last years of the 19th century like the, the, the you yeah, know yeah and um, for the movie they had morgan freeman you know all that sort of thing but in the awesome there was an xbox awesome, Free, awesome, yeah exactly yes yeah. Um, and in the xbox 360 there was an xbox 360 download only game it was on ps3 as well but it was a download only game on the xbox 360 and they had patrick stewart doing it oh wow and it got a little bit panned because it was quite hard to control. It wasn't uh, doing the Tom Cruise film then that came. No, out. no, no, no. It was it generally fully from the book. So as you're yeah, playing, yeah. It's sort of like what was that? Um, there, there was a game on Steam I played recently, like it. But basically, yeah, it, Patrick Stewart narrates what's going on whilst music is happening, and it's like, all completely two D, and the whole thing plays like a flashback game. It looked a full on homage to flashback. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, no one cared about that game. And it's so <laughs> much a shame because it, it is clunky, you know, where you climb up the ladder, then you have to push right to turn around, then you yeah, push that's right, right yeah. that sort of thing. I really like Flashback. I love it, actually, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's got that, in, if you've got that mindset, then it's a brilliant game. Uh, you know, died, okay, died, okay, died, okay. And then yeah. you make sure you jump at the end of, yeah, all that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, it's gone. You can download the demo on Xbox 360, but when, you, when you've downloaded it, it says, you know, download the whole game. You click that, and it says this service is no longer available. So you can play the first level. Yeah. But you just can't play anything other than that, um, which is gutting because it's the final <laughs> War of the Worlds game. So I'm really in a bit of a pickle. Um, so I'm yeah, yeah, You're just possibly going to jailbreak my uh, one of those Xboxes I've got just so I can play that one game that I can't get anymore. You might have an easier time if you've got a PS3. They're a lot easier to jailbreak than, uh, than yeah. an Xbox 360. I don't know if that, but it's not necessarily a lot of the um, Xbox Live stuff came out on PSN as well. It did come out on PSN this game. Uh, I oh, haven't looked right. actually. Uh, it, it dawned on me the other day that exact thing. Yeah, I should probably do my PS3 instead. Uh, I've got a couple of those. I think 
Yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. I got a spare one that I'm not a jailbreak. It took me like 20 minutes to do. Uh, and then I pl- plopped a big hard drive in it. I'm not going to tell you how to do it or condone piracy or anything, which is naughty. <laughs> I own all the games yeah, I've got on it. <laughs> we are forced to do it as retro gamers. Everyone exactly. talks about having, you know, you've got to get physical this, physical this, physical this. And I think it's good. Like, you know, like we're, we're missing out on so many of these classic download only titles now. Uh, and the only way to play them, you've got to pirate them. Yeah, there's, exactly. no, there's nothing else you can do. There's genuinely nothing else you can do. It's like pirates uh, are literally uh, helping preserve the history of video gaming, really. <laughs> um, you know, um, that's the why they all exist, isn't it? People uploading the ROMs for uh, uh, video game preservation or history, you know. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's like I was saying, like, you know, at some point in the near future, probably Xbox Live for the 360 is going to get shut down. So I would advise... If you've got a few extra quid, I know that a lot of people are like, I mean, I used to be like this. I'm never going to download games. I'm anti digital games. I always want to buy a disc. Well, you know, you might have to put that to one side because there's stuff mm. that literally won't come out that, on, on a disc for the 360. I mean, not the Sega stuff, like we were just saying. A lot of it's still available, like Daytona USA, the best version of the game, even better than the arcade. Um, you know, runs at 1080p, 60 frames a second, looks awesome. We've got all the feet stuff from the arcade, a bunch of extra stuff. It's like three pounds. So just jump on now and buy that bastard. I think it works yeah. on an Xbox One as well. So that's a good thing about that. Virtual Fighter 2, again, it's about £5. Uh, Sonic the Fighters is on there. Sonic CD. <laughs> I um, think you can get the Fighters on one of the compilations as well. Uh, one of the disc compilations. I think it's on Gems. gems. Yeah, it could be on Gems, yeah. couldn't it? Yeah, with Sonic R and that. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, I don't think Sonic R came out for 360, actually. I think Gems was the last time um and um yeah a lot yeah tons of sega games um yeah and they'll eventually um the fighting vipers is a really good version of fight, fighting Vi- vipers as well really good arcade and satin game mm-hmm. um yeah so yeah um definitely if you've got a few spare quid just jump onto xbox live arcade because as much as a handful of them have been made backwards compatible for the xbox one a lot of them will just completely fall by the wayside and you'll never see them again unless you're without pirating your console um, and there's, a lot of them have a lot of little achievements. So if you're one of the achievement mining person, which I've been known to do, I've got a spare weekend and I just want to bang out on my gamer score. Um, they're great for that as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely something you should look into. Um, yeah, it's, actually, yeah, it's annoying because the Wii shop, um, I wasn't into the virtual console side, like Dan, you were saying, you know, how long, how many times have we all had these games, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and people like us were probably playing this stuff on emulators I think I was playing emulators in like the late nineties when they started becoming a thing. So yeah, I remember. I think Master System was the first emulator I ever experienced, and I, I definitely played it with a keyboard. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think I played. Uh, it was probably, probably most likely it was either Nesticle. <laughs> yeah, <weird>. yeah. <laughs> um, it was like a DOS-based NES emulator and uh, Genesis. Yeah. I used to play both of them. I think they're made by the same dude. It was like a severed hand was the mouse pointer that would be dripping blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you always my, recognize the music as well, the, the crappy MIDI file that they use, yeah, to do all those things. So, yeah, the, the emulation was, wasn't wasn't brilliant, but you could play all those games, it was mind blowing at the time, wasn't it? To play all these games. Um, I remember I saw in the uh, in the yellow pages, uh, back in the day, where someone was telling, yeah, absolutely, you know, <laughs> going to find um, I literally got on a train to go somewhere, someone said they had Sega Ages for the um, uh, for the Dreamcast. And I went all that way because I thought like, I heard about Sega Ages in all these magazines, but I never sort of yeah, yeah. I to go and pick it up. And then I realized I got there and it was a pirate game and it wasn't even Sega Ages, it wasn't like the five games. It oh, was right, a yeah. directory of two discs just with every Mega Drive game that we're talking about <laughs> like crackers and all of the random stuff like that was on there as well. I'm like, yeah, I think this is an official Sega product, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're releasing things on CDRs now, are they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. That was a funny one, wasn't it? Sega Ages. They got all the. They got a ton of them in Japan. Uh, the individual games, didn't they? Yes. They come out on individual discs, like Outrun and stuff. And we got this like we got drip fed like a compilation on the Saturn of three of those. Yeah, volume one as well. We never yeah. got another volume. Yeah, we never mm. got another volume. I, I think Sega. I don't think they handled it themselves. What was the one on the on the PlayStation Two? Something like twenty six hundred yen or something. They were Sega called. Classics Collection. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and they all had yeah twenty six hundred yen, which is like twenty quid. And there were so many good games. We yeah. did get that. We we got like a we got like a, a, a selection of those. Yeah, we got like mm. ten of them, I believe. Hang on, yeah, Sega Classics Arcade. It's good. 
So your classic arcade collection, yeah, you get like um Oh yeah, you know what I've actually I've actually got that, but then there were so many more and I, oh, there's I tons, always yeah. try and get the Sega Rally one, but that just goes for huge money online. Yeah, if you got Sega Rally two thousand six in Japan, they gave you original Sega Rally. Mm. As a set, and I think they eventually just released it as a separate disc, but then it never came out anywhere else. So I friggin' love Sega Rally. I would have bought the hell out of that if they brought that out on a I've already got it on the Saturn, but you know, um, to have a version that was like arcade perfect would have been amazing. Um, yeah, and we got like a classics collection. It's like it's really cheap, it's like six pounds, I think, or something. There's nothing special about it at all. But um, it, it's got uh, you found you got it, Dan. You better tell us what games are on it. Yeah, yeah. you're on about this, yeah. That's the one, yeah. That's yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, Sega Classics Collection. Like, some of these are, are all right, but there are some really bad ones on here. I mean, Columns, you can't fuck that up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, Monaco GP, uh, Virtual Racing, Virtu- Virtua Racing, which didn't yeah. really look bad in the first place, and this doesn't really look much better. Um, you know, it's heavily polygon back on it's the It's like game. a straight-up port, isn't it? They haven't even tried Not to Not far it. off. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, you've got the 32X version over there as well yeah Golden Axe, abysmal absolutely abysmal so yeah you yeah. got Golden Axe, uh fantasy zone which is surprisingly quite good uh outrun uh, um space good. harrier soundtrack's good but yeah the actual yeah, game yeah, absolutely <laughs> space harrier surprisingly quite good and i don't think i've ever actually put in or ever selected taint r and bonanza brothers all oh, right yeah they're on there as well yeah but the, the, the original versions aren't on it at all, are they? It's literally, apart from Virtual no. Ra- Ra- Racing, which is just the port of the arcade. Well, isn't um, there, I believe there's either 25 or 50. I can't remember. Any, but the, what the, it's one of those numbers. But basically, yeah, the the, um, the PlayStation, you say 2,600 yen collection, yeah. the first like 10 or 12 are those remake ones. Yeah. And then they got ported back over and then they ended up being collections of the original games. So like the Fantasy Zone collection for the PlayStation. Yeah, the whole, yeah. A beautiful, lovely set a collection of games. So yeah, yeah, and we just I get like the like, M2 remakes. They're like probably the best way of playing them. Yeah, and it's not like you know, like it was the Sega Sound. We got the few, the the, the three game in one, mm-hmm. which is understandable because it sold like shit. The Sound over, here, unfortunately, it was just yeah. the three of us and like six other people <laughs> at the Sound. And it, but so the, like I understand why they wouldn't want to release twenty, you know, old games or something. Um, I mean, I should have put a few more on there for the British market if they wanted. It wouldn't, you know, it's the same as like we're saying on those Switch. I could fit more games on those discs. Oh yeah, yeah. Or you know, yeah. Cool if they put even like ten or something like that. I think that would be that would have. Would it though? I mean, you had the Sega Ages thing on the Mega CD, and I think that done very well. Yeah, you had that the pack in uh, arcade classics collection, didn't you? That like five games. They messed that up, didn't like Golden actually couldn't play it in two player and stuff like. that. Yeah, that's right, and they changed the sound of it. Well, because of the Mega CD had an extra sound channel, yeah. I've noticed it on Golden Axe. Um, when you kill someone, them doing a little scream doesn't stop the music. Right. So, but there you go. There's a great reason to buy uh, that kind of game again. A good one-player version of Golden Axe. A good one-player version of Golden Axe, which the music doesn't cut out. So, yeah. Um, to be fair, that, you see that everywhere, that game. So, yeah. it, you know what? If you see it for a quid or something, yeah, do it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always the first first game you buy in a Mega CD collection. <laughs> yeah, I think it came out with... I think it, was it, was like, it was like just the standard packing thing, wasn't it? I don't think it, I don't think you could buy it separately. I think it was, it was just included with, with, with them. Um, and then on the Dreamcast, you had that awful Sega Smash pack. Apart from Virtual Cop 2. <laughs> Virtual Cop 2 was on that. That's good. <laughs> Uh, but the but the Mega Drive games have just been completely annihilated. Uh, the, the emulation is horrendous. I um Scott Hawkins, the guy who did that, and I interviewed him. And oh, yeah, you spoke to the guy, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I wanted to speak to him because there was an uh, I read on a Wikipedia that there was a Sega Swell too, and I just couldn't find anything about it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I contacted him. And said, Does this exist? And he said yes. And I'm like, do you want to talk about it? And he was like really excited that someone wanted to talk to him about that rather than Comic Zone or any of these other things. Yeah, yeah. Of. So he'd done it, and he gave me a copy of it. Um, and he kept bringing up about the fact that oh, Sega really liked what we did with Sega Smash Pack and all that sort of stuff. And I just like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yes. that's what I say. <laughs> it was shit, mate. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> games uh, were on it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we didn't get it in a pal. Um, it's only in the US. Yeah, I think they chucked it in as a freebie with a lot of consoles there as well. It was like five games, but the, you did get Virtual Cop two. Um, which was, I think, a port of the PC version, but it was good. That 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 ran really well. Uh, works with the Dreamcast light gun. There's not a lot of there's like three Dreamcast light gun games, so it was kind of that's probably one of them. I think. Um, uh, or Death Crimson, maybe. Um, 
the Konami like awful zombie shooter thing. Um, not House of the Dead, but yeah, um, Virtual Cop Two was on is on there, so it's worth it for that on its the own. Confidential Mission was the other one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Confidential yeah. Mission, which is actually good, uh, really good. Silent mm. Scope, Silent Scope as well. Silent slope. Silent Slope. Yeah, <laughs> should have been your name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, um, but I remember I read it like. I saw the about that Sega Smash Pack in like Dreamcast, like like D, uh, Dreamcast magazine. Um, right. It was after like Dreamcast official mag went went tits up, so I ended up buying that. That was the only one left. Um, it was actually probably the best one anyway. But yeah, um, and yeah, I remember reading about the Sega Smash Pack, and I was like, oh god, I'll totally buy that if they brought that over here. But then it was like years later that I watched like a uh, YouTube video of uh, remember how crap Sega Smash Pack was, and I was like, oh my god, that looks that's the the, the obviously the Play Sonic One on it, and you'll probably start crying because the yeah, spin. It is that when you when you when you can't emulate Sonic One, it's I can't. yeah, and they've already done it. They did it on Sonic Jam, and that was even that had ish, some issues. Um, you'll notice it with Sonic's jump sound; it yeah, sounds slightly off, which is really sad that I would even notice that. But um, <laughs> they, they they couldn't implement the Sonic Three and Knuckles thing, could they? In Jam, I don't believe. No, no, it's not in there. No, which means you have got Sonic Three, but it's Sonic Three is obviously quite short. Isn't it? So um, you could bang bang through that in a, an hour if you wanted. Uh, well, yeah, easily, I, but yeah. I've been on stream before that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Knuckles as well. So yeah. Yeah, um, but the one thing about Sonic Jam, I mean, apart from it, it was like ninety percent pretty well emulated, really. And um, but you had the addition of you could do a spin dash in Sonic One, um, which was really really ha handy. It kind of makes it a bit easier. But yeah, um, not that Sonic One's particularly hard, but yeah. It's yeah, so, the original three, though, isn't it? Or, or, and Knuckles. Yeah, I probably would say so. Yeah, especially the underwater levels and the bloody really? you know, the marble yeah, zone. Yeah, on like your first go, you know, it's like bloody hell. Um, and yeah, th so they've already done it with the Sega Saturn Sonic Jam pack. Um, and, and so I don't understand why they. Well, I guess they handled that internally, didn't they? they? Didn't sort of get a contractor to kind of jump in and quickly bang out a sort of <laughs> compilation sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was really weird. And I think you had in Japan on the Dreamcast there was other there was like um Yu Suzuki one. Like Gameworks, I think it was called. Yeah, it's actually like uh if you're if you're into like compilations, it's quite an obscure one. Well, for us it is not so much in Japan, but yeah, the Dreamcast uh, there was one called Yu Suzuki Gameworks. It's literally all the games that Yu Suzuki made, uh arcade games in the from in the eighties in, in one pack. So Outrun, uh Space Harrier um afterburner one or two i others. totally know this i've looked this up before yeah yeah it's got like a really beautiful like, art bo artwork book that comes with it um and and the games run really well um though it was just, um outrun they've had to change the car because obviously the film got the ferrari like love license so they right. just um slightly reworked the look of the car you, you, it's basically what it looks like in on the switch outrun that just come out um yeah. it, it's that um I always get so excited when anything has power drift on it. So it's a yeah, win. power. Yeah, I think that's on on there as well. Um, yeah, well, that came out on the Saturn, didn't it? But we didn't get that here. Weird, weirdly, but it came on. Oh, oh um, yeah, power drift didn't. Yeah, yeah, did it come out on the Mega Drive as well. I remember being on the Amiga. Weirdly, I think it, in, it was in works for the thirty two X, but it didn't end up happening. Like pretty much everything, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's Sega in a nutshell, isn't it? Sadly. It was in the works, but it didn't end up happening. It's such a shame. I mean, the thirty-two X. Like, I wish the Saturn came out a year or two later, and yeah. then really pushed that thirty-two X a bit more. I suppose they wouldn't be able to because the PlayStation was out and stuff. But I really like the thirty-two X. It's got a good selection of games. I mean, when you think of the ratio, I mean, what was it, thirty, forty games? The ratio of good to bad is actually like I'd say about eighty percent of good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you think about it, I mean, what is what would you say is an absolute worst game? I mean, I can't think off the top of my head. Something like uh, that. Uh, I, I've never got into Calibri. Uh, I always found that really annoying to play. Oh, the hummingbird like fight. Echo, it's like Echo the Dolphin, yeah. wasn't it? But you're yeah, a bird. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I couldn't. I felt like that was letting the designer go a bit too AWOL with his fan, fantasy idea. That I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I only ever had a few games for it. I mean, I, I used to own before I fucking sold it. Just before <laughs> Matthew came out as well, I had Back story, uh, yeah. I had a box copy of Chaotix that I sold, and then a week later they announced Mania and the prices. I sold it for like a hundred. Oh god, that's gone for ape shit. Then now. Mania went up. <laughs> it was like selling it for like five hundred pounds. I'm like, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean you can buy it again now for about 150 quid. So I've wanted it back. It wouldn't really be a problem. But um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know really. Um, there's a golf game. Uh, I mean, oh, there, was yeah. only, there was only like 30, 40 games for it, wasn't there? It's got the best name for a game ever. 36 great holes. <laughs> That's it. Your mum went out to go and buy Bone Storm, but come back with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lee, Lee Cavallo's putting challenge, yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's like uh, looking at CEX. I think it's true. We might have covered this actually before, but it's still a ridiculous thing. Looking on CEX's website, so they sell 32X games. Mm -hmm. um, Dark Side, uh, which is a mega rare 32X game, only came out in Europe, I think. Thousand quid. Wow. Primal Rage, 900 quid. T Mech, 900 quid. Um, Calibri, that you just said, 300. That's stupid. Yeah. Um, Knuckles Cha Cha Chaotix, 290 quid. Uh, Night Trap CD, obviously, that, you know, one of the three sort of 32X CD games. 260 quid that's crazy um, isn't it that's ridiculous isn't it i mean I, i've never i never had a 32x juju did you ever have, have a 32X? I, I didn't no i wasn't really it was one of those things just all these little add-ons and you had to sort of make your bet somewhere um but what i i, I sort of wanted to ask is sort of moving the conversation on a little bit mm -hmm. is dan your, your sort of youtube channel now Myself and Trevor have been sort of huge fans of it for ages. Oh, shit, and, right? <laughs> and, Never get told hearing that. <laughs> and, I, and I'm looking at, it's, it's quite funny, you know, you look at people's YouTube channels and you go sort by their earliest ones. And then mm -hmm. it's someone sitting in front of a webcam going, um, um, I, I, I like Street Fighter. And, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's yeah. done quite basically, maybe like this podcast, really. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at your first video from sort of four years ago. And that's, you, you know, it almost looks like, and I've, and I've watched that, sort of the same sort of quality of, of video. So you could, what, what I sort of like about yourself, and it's not really asking a question, it's more for you to sort of elaborate, is how yeah. you've gone from, from something you could literally put on, let, let's say, one of the um, sort of BBC's two, and, and it would be a, an interesting oh. show. Someone said that. I, I, I quickly got joined into a forum of people and someone said they could watch it on telly and I was like, oh, that's so fucking awesome you said that. Yeah, but, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, e, e, easily. I, I, to be honest with you, it's not going to be strictly on Saturday night. Yeah, it will. Uh, but if it, if it <laughs> went on to it for, for the right people, it'd be absolutely brilliant. And oh, that, that's not a derogatory comment. That's well, just... no, that's the thing. Like, So basically, I... I, for, for me, I always found so, yeah, the, the way I started looking up all these sort of people. I mean, there was a few people I already knew about people like Ashins, people like Larry, and stuff like that. Um, but Larry was very few and far between because you know, he didn't release like the sort of content I wanted to, the, the, the stuff of content I really gobbled up, uh, mm -hmm. incredibly frequently. But someone that did was someone like you know, very obvious to say, and it's gonna sound incredibly cliche, but angry video game nerd. I remember he yeah, was yeah. pumping out a lot of stuff, and I was liking what he did, and you know, I binge on like. You know, by the time I found him, I'd binge like the first 40, 50 episodes by the time I'd found him. Yes, yeah, And I remember yeah. he did one. And there was one episode that fully changed the way I went. Because I was like, oh, it'd be cool if I did this. It'd be cool if I did this. Everyone, you know, thinks that when they watch this sort of mm. stuff. And he did one episode, and it was about a, a game called Sword Quest. And the thing is, I don't really have much nostalgia for, for NES stuff. So it was always exciting to learn NES stuff because I just didn't really have any. I had like maybe 10, 15 games, it was Turtles, Mario, Duck Hunt. It was all really obvious stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he was talking about all of these games, even things like um, Top Gun and, you know, things that are incredibly cliche on, on YouTube now. I found it really interesting. But when he done Sword Quest, that blew me away. I am never going to play Sword Quest. That is a game I do not give two craps about. But the story behind it about how you could win the chalice and, you know, like no one knows where this, like, yeah, you know, yeah. sword's gone, you know, in the competition. I was like, that's really interesting. And that was probably the first thing. Um, Larry had done a few that really grabbed me. And uh, it was actually a little bit later on, but he did a um, thing about the, the, the lost Thundercats game. I'm like, that's mm. cool. And yeah. then when he done that, talked about that, I quickly tried to find out where he found that information out. I don't know if I did find out where he exactly got it, but by searching, I started to find out facts myself. Um, 
uh, Lazy Game Reviews did a uh, video about the history of DRM, which is a 14 minute video looking at DRM. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I remember showing one of my friends that. He's like, I'm not fucking watching this, Dan. <laughs> like, <laughs> play before you know it, 14 minutes had gone. And because I remember he says at the end of the video, and like, well, I've just been talking here for 14 minutes about DRM. And I'm like, wow. You know, like it, it, it captures you, it fully engrosses you. And that man can talk about calculators for an hour and you just sit there and listen to him. And that's the sort of thing I wanted to do. I, I knew all these little stories that like, no one's talked about. Because you say you look back at my earliest video. My earliest video is actually one that sadly got deleted. Um, mm. If you type in Roland, you'll find it because I re-uploaded it like a two, year or two later. But no one ever talked about the history of uh, the, the story of Roland about how Alan Sugar just basically said, make me a mascot called Roland. What is it? <laughs> Don't matter. Just go. And, you know, next thing you know, you've got like, six characters that look entirely different. And I found that quite a funny, but also very interesting history piece. So I did yeah, that. Yeah. And then my mind mindset was, if I make a video that's so incredibly well produced or as well produced as I could possibly make it, mm. uh, it will stand the test of time on YouTube and I will make essentially the only video people will need to see regarding Roland on the road. Because that that's watching your videos and I say going back to the ones from four years ago mm. and, and I, I thought what was hilarious, one of your, your, your best videos is or one of your, your most watched videos is your Streets of Rage one. Yes. And you did that, it's got 300,000 views. Like then you that. did another video, then you did another one, then you did another one. You've got loads, they've all got loads of views. And then your your 10th or 11th video is your 250 subscriber special. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, well, hold on, you're doing all these absolutely great videos. And you, you, you I don't know, I, I must have, you must have felt quite sort of, come on, mate, th these are good videos here. I'm, I'm telling you great, you know, information, oh, they're engaging. You get to 250. And, and then you, you only got to 250 after right, right. making those sort of 10 right, and, marks to go by. I mean, I, I used to look at other channels. Like I remember looking at, um, you might not know channels like this, but like people like Johnny Nitpick uh, is very, mm. very over the top. John Tronny, that's what he yeah. based off on John Tron, um, American, very slapsticky Nez. Yeah. And I remember looking at him and he was about 2,000 subscribers. And I was thinking, man, imagine if I get to 2,000 subscribers one day, you know. Yeah. Um, and I remember, like, you know, you have your ups and your downs in YouTube. Streets of Rage was a massive up for me. Like, everyone yeah. was that from the get go. And, you know, I'd only get, I'd get like 500 views and I thought that was it. And then I'd get 1,000. Oh my God, oh my God, this video is, and then 10,000, you know, all this sort yeah. of stuff. Um, but then I remember I released Golden Axe because, oh, Streets of Rage did well. I'll do Golden Axe. And um, it only got a, about 100 views for a few weeks. Uh, that's the same one that's up, uploaded now. That's like yeah. one of the most popular videos. And yeah. I remember that going running to this forum and go, why is no one watching Golden Axe? And I mean, looking back, that's a bit of a dickish thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like, I, 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 yeah, so I don't know. Like, for me, it felt like 250 subscribers is like a really good thing. But do you, do you find that people now, they're going, because the quality of your library is, it is, is what you just said, it, it is timeless. And I, 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 make. and I know it sounds like corny to say, but that's what I try and do. And do, do you find that people, you, you look at your analytics, oh, today people, you know, most people watch my latest video, but a thousand people watch my Golden Axe one and 500 people watched. Um, it, that... I, a bit, but I mm. just let it go um, a lot of mm. the time. So, as an example, one of the hardest videos I've had to make editing-wise, because I've, I've only ever let somebody else script one of my videos fully once, I think, yeah. um, which isn't bad, almost 500 videos. Um, and that was the Vega Plus video. Oh, man, that, that was... So yeah, that was one very that Kieran to write. So Kieran Hawking from Laird's Lair, like another, he, he's actually started putting out some really like documentary-esque stuff as well. Really, really good channel. Um, it should be way, way bigger than his. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, he he wrote that. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so basically, I put it out, and then there was all the drama that happened behind it. And the way I, I I've got to a point now where I'm putting out so much content that I just thought, fuck it, I don't care. I'll just give the video to someone else, even though I'd spent essentially probably weeks of work on it. If you actually calculated the hours I spent editing that bad boy, um, I just like just give it away, and that that's that's how I want my connection to be if it isn't exactly perfect and it's not causing me drama and it's just going to be good then just have it you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um uh that, that's that's uh so I, I don't i don't feel upset anymore that videos certain videos do better than others like i always want my complete histories to do better than any other video because mm. they're the ones that will be like 
type comic zone in, you find my comic zone video, and if, hopefully that's the only thing you'll ever need to see. I mean, I don't want to take away my other YouTubers, obviously, but that's yeah, why I yeah. make like, the ultimate video on comic zone or Choo Choo Rocket or Streets of Rage or Space Channel Five, whatever I've done, you know. And um, uh, uh, the, the, the crazy thing is, they they take a lot longer to make because of that. I'll, I'll spend sometimes yeah. like four four or five hours, and then at the end of it, I'm like, I've, I've edited two minutes worth of video here, like completed two minutes of video because I've done so many weird effects and yeah, yeah. Decide enough. Okay, well, I've got this cover now, and then I'll cut around the person perfectly, and then I'll give it a shadow, and I'll cut around the logo, and all this other stuff. You see a lot of that in my Splatterhouse video, actually. And yeah. um, uh, but the crazy thing is, they only earn half the amount of views that kick scammers earn, and I can bust a kick scammer out in a couple of days. <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, well, but they're I, good I, also. They're, they're, yeah, I, I, I do I like kick scammer. scammer. Everyone loves a bit of drama, don't they? I suppose. Oh, so I think they're my favourite of your of your series is kick scammers. I mean, I was going to say it to you. Have you got a favourite, or have you, well, what would you say is the worst out of the scammers? Not in who terms stole of like, the most money. Yeah, yeah. Who would you say is the most notorious? Yeah. Um. Uh. The 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 big ones that come to mind is obviously the. The Vega Plus has actually just become a ball ache by the end of it, so I just want to sort of forget it. <laughs> so I, know, I might, I might be doing an update on that. Actually, the, the, the latest development it keeps giving, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I, might, I might give a tiny little update. We'll see. We'll see. It's like but, one um, woman, isn't it, that seems to be responding to? Is she the one that organised it? That's responding to all the emails and vitriol. Yeah, it's it's all a bit weird. I mean, it's stupid. Like, <laughs> and the the thing is, if 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 I make a video and I heavily talk about a particular thing whether it's sega or a nintendo console or something like that the american because i've got more of an american presence than a british presence which is quite different than people like kim and stuff that i, I as far as i understand yeah uh, and they don't seem to be too upset about the fact that i'll completely blast a particular console or, or a particular community whoa <laughs> talking <laughs> bad about the zx spectrum <laughs> oh god yeah i'm like fucking you know, hell i opened the floodgates with that one I was <laughs> but i mean it was good it was good um uh, so probably pushing that one aside. Favorite episodes, the Bob's game. I think is probably my best work as a kick scammer. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed making that, and that was because the thing is, I had to. That was so hard to make that episode because as I'm writing out the script and I'm getting really far into it, I'm just stop. I kept stopping. I kept thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do this video because almost what is it like a 40 minute video i believe about 20 to 30 minutes of that video is nothing but text on a screen and i've got to somehow make that interesting mm. so um i turned it into a horror movie essentially there was smoke going along the screen it kept doing this weird glitchy um sort of the ring vhs tape thing where it kept <laughs> cutting out and right, then yeah, the background yeah. coming and it's yeah, quite cool. cool because my analytics now i can keep seeing people do this People keep trying to stop the video. <laughs> <and> see, <laughs> keep doing it. Keep doing it. I like that. But that's probably the best one I've done. Uh, I don't think it's like the craziest video I, I, I've done, but I think that's probably, probably the be my best kick scammer work. Uh, very, very proud of that. And I've got Wang involved as well. I'm a big fan of that guy. Um, uh, great YouTube channel. Um, but I don't know. Uh, my kick scammers, I suppose. I really like the erotic one. Uh, it didn't get the views because YouTube stopped it <laughs> a little See bit. Why, maybe there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all talking yeah. about vaginas and stuff all the way through. Yeah. That. Was, that was pretty hardcore. Let me just have a look. Um, uh, kick scammers. The Ken Whitman one. That was exciting to do. Was um, he the one that um, he kept on doing the same like a, a game, a board game or something? Yeah, did it again. Right, yeah. So he basically done. Uh, so the actual video technically is a lie, but. It, it could have been worse than it. I could have made it even more clickbait. So, <laughs> <laughs> the the Kickstarter scum that run away of your money six times so far. In actual fact, there was eight times when you actually add up the fact that there was different Kickstarters under different names. There was eight times, and they weren't all successful. Fair enough, but uh, yeah, yeah. I remember that was the first video I got my wife involved. Um, mm -hmm. And we had a Friday night. I remember, like lucky, lucky guy, I am to have a wife. <laughs> With this, but we sat there and we just yeah. tried to try and get a timeline of all the different things that he's done. Um, and as we were doing it, I was like, I can't remember how big I was then, maybe 60, 70,000, something like that. And I remember saying to my wife, um, I wonder if he'll ever see this because it's like his name, and I've put it in the tag. So you type your name into Google, everyone does that. Like, it, this is going to come up for him, <laughs> you know. And I was like, yeah. I wonder what will happen, I wonder if he'll see it, and then like that night he like became a patron of mine uh and i was like this is weird 
I like what's going on here like it was only like a dollar yeah he he, he he became a patron of mine yeah and i was like this is strange because i've literally calling him scum and I'm, I'm doing really not i'm calling him some nasty names yeah in hindsight maybe i shouldn't have done I don't know. yeah yeah. Um and uh yeah, yeah, he became a patron of mine, and then I was I found it funny. I was like, oh, fair enough, he can pay me if he wants. I don't know if he's trying to scare me. And then I sat there and thought about it, like, what does that make me look like if I'm like yeah. kicked off that he's stolen like million almost not million, but like hundreds of thousands of pounds? And then I'm even if even though it's only a dollar, I'm taking a dollar off him. I was like, Yeah, I might refund that dollar. <laughs> so I refunded it and then I blocked it. <laughs> uh, he actually sent me a, a D, D, DCM or D, DRCM, whatever it's called, um, to take down the video. But see, I think what happened, I don't know. I think what happened, I think he might have gone to YouTube to try and take it down. But he might not be big enough for them to listen to. I'm not sure. Um, uh, and that's not like a big-headed thing to say because what, the way he done it, which I found really bizarre, he went to Patreon to take down the video. So Patreon said, oh, we've had a DRCM, TCM request, whatever it is, to, to take down the video. I'm like, well, you, you, I was like, okay, look, I'm happy to work with you, but you obviously can't take down the video. Like, that's on YouTube. And they went, yeah, no, no, yeah. we don't want to take down the video. We just want to take down the post. But it had already been up like a week. Obviously, my Patreons know who I am. My Patreons, you know, have seen the video. They know about it. And I was like, so this will all go away if I just delete the post. And they're like, yeah, I will delete the post then. And I deleted the post on Patreon that said there's a video about Ken Whitman <laughs> go and check it out. You know, and I, that was that was I enjoyed making that video, but um that was the first time I started realizing that you know kick scammers is a bit of a scary area. Um yeah, I you mean don't, you don't anyone turn up at your house, do you? I know, yeah. He's a big guy. So. <laughs> I remember being really, really uh, disappointed when uh, I remember that first uh um night trap Kickstarter. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I was actually really looking forward to it. I was gonna probably gonna chuck them some money. I, and I've then, got it now, haven't I? I they released it. And yeah, it, it kind of got, had a happy ending in the end, but it did seem a bit dodgy because there was a whole thing, wasn't there, where they were being weird about if it's going to have an actual proper box. Yeah, you know, they, they were saying what console it's coming on. They were, they realised how badly they messed that up, didn't they? Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, yeah, it's going to be coming out on the Xbox One," but we're not uh, in like a. And they were just like, "Oh, it would just be in a sleeve, a plastic sleeve." It was like, "Well, you can't get a license to part of the license to be an Xbox game maker. You have to." I think a lot of it boxes. Just, we'll make it up as we go along. Uh, yeah, I don't know how it came to limited run, but I'm guessing because you know, obviously, they know what they're doing and they're releasing physical games. They went to them and said, "Like, look, we'll sort out the annoying stuff." <laughs> you know. um yeah actually, there's actually a really good documentary about the new one on the new uh you know um a version that came out the anniversary one um the the guys the uh what they called the uh my life in gaming they actually do oh, is it actually on the disc yeah they've got no, no it's on this it's just it's just just on their channel um oh well, yeah, yeah i've seen that i've seen that yeah yeah apparently the guy just uh the screaming villains guy i come not a couple of companies i think it's just one dude he just made it for a laugh, like he remade a remake, a quick little test remake of the game himself for, for mm. work on a phone. And um, someone said, "Oh, this is really good. You should like get in touch with the actual bloke that owns the rights to this game." And he did, and he saw it and thought, "Oh, we want to try and re-release it. Can you help us?" And yeah, so it kind of had a, ha a, a happy ending in the end. I think the only other Kickstarter that I've been bothered about was um, Elite Dangerous, but again, that came out and that was fine. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, honestly, like. People obviously think I hate Kickstarter, and I don't. I mean, I I actually back a lot of things. I'm backing stuff literally as we speak. I've got a couple of things I'm backing right now, like a War of the Worlds board game. I'm going to make my own Kickstarter eventually for the board game I want to make. Oh, cool! Uh, it, but we're talking maybe years down the line. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, I genuinely like Kickstarter as a platform. It's yeah. just at the same time, there's a lot of very cool, interesting, scammy stories. Um, the, uh, well, I think is it, it's good that you're you're doing these things because you know you're letting people know you, you can't get away with it. Well, yeah. I, think it's, I, I don't think it's hard. I mean, I, I suppose I look at Kickstarter most days, so mm. it's not too bad for me. Like I know what I'm looking for, but it's very easy just to go on anything Kickstarter, look up the person who's made it by clicking their name, see what else. It, that's the first thing. As soon as you click on someone's name, you're like, oh, they've done four other projects. Oh, the comments are really bad on all three of those four of those projects. Maybe I'm not going to yeah. back that thing. You know, yeah. simple stuff like that just to look up. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. But yeah. no, the, the kick scammers are the ones that people seem to like a lot. It's it was quite that at first to answer your previous question was something that was a bit like, oh, what? 
these videos that take a couple of days are doing better than my complete histories that take weeks or potentially months. I'm working on Pac-Man, the complete history at the moment, and I dedicate myself um, half a day every week uh, to continue working on that ridiculous script. And that'll probably be a couple of few hours long, maybe. I don't know whenever that gets done. Uh, uh, but I know it won't do as well as a kick scammer or a good kick scammer, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, that's the way it is. I remember I was on stage at a... Um, uh, an anime con uh, last February, and I, I was up there with Cad Icarus and Did You Know Gaming, and I was obviously very happy to meet those guys. Oh, they're cool, Did You Know Gaming, yeah. Yeah, and I, I'd never met Did You Know Gaming before, and um, I'd spoken to them once or twice, and I was like, oh my god, I'm getting to know Did You Know Gaming, that's so cool. And um, they were on stage, and then uh, someone talked about talk about your videos or something like that, and then like, when I said about, I said, oh, complete histories, complete histories, complete history, complete history, complete history. Oh, and I also do this kick scammer stuff. The digital gaming guy took the mic and goes, and yeah, guys, check out his kick scammer stuff because it is amazing. I was like, I have everything I've said. That's the stuff that you want to promote, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, people love the kick scammer stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm on to a winner with that series. <laughs> I've got some good ones where I'm working on as well. Going back to complete histories, I've, I've got some tips to get some loads of viewers cool. here. And now, complete histories of the Settlers games. Right, okay. Football manager. That will never. Uh, that will do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Age of Empires. Age of Empires, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, these are more like joke ones, just that I want to see. Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah, complete history of Fortnite. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Sometimes yeah. I, want, I want to throw in like really weird curveballs because now I've got the time to do uh like the real big ones because a lot of the time what would happen is i'd work on a big one and then i'd put out smaller ones while i'm working on the big one which is still the case but mm. now but but back then the big one would be like i say something like uh, i don't know splatterhouse or something which is like a 30 40 minute video but now the big ones pac-man which is like yeah. stupidly big yeah, and yeah. Now the smaller ones i'm making are things like splatterhouse so uh, eventually i'll get to everything um that i want to cover you know um I'm looking on my shelf and I'm just like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Best way to find something to have come up with ideas, isn't it? Really just check out your games that you got lined yeah, up. Yeah. I mean, it is gutting. Sometimes you do have ones. I want to do something on Robocop versus Terminator, but just finding mm. out information about the history. I love that game. Yeah. Like that and I, I know there's a good history there somewhere. Um, I have recently reached out to all of the developers that were, I literally just went down the Moby games, everyone that worked on it down to the, 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 the cleanup artists and everyone, because even the smallest person that worked on a game will know some kind of cool tidbit. Oh, yeah, Dave Perry. I remember when he came in the office, you know there's something there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I'm contacting every single one to try and get any kind of uh, um, uh, any kind of information about the history. It's why I haven't done Power Stone yet, because I've only recently started finding out stuff about that, and that's one I wanted to do since the beginning. So You ever thought of teaming up with Kim Justice? Oh, me and Kim, me and Kim chat, like, all the time. I think me and Kim chat more than any other uh, any of the other YouTubers I know. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, 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 I've said it before. I mean, when she puts out the big videos that she puts out, I think it's some of the best stuff on YouTube. Mm, I yeah, easily, yeah. I absolutely adore it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, me and Kim have worked together in the past a few times. Like, she's been the voice on a few episodes. But, uh, yeah, now I'm full-time. I can start doing proper collaborations rather than just, Kim, can you quickly read these lines? When do you need them? Three hours. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, that's normally how I work with my videos. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, there's another one actually just came to mind, like kick Kickstarter things that I was mm. hoping would work. It was a '90s arcade racer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was some dude. That, he looked great. I mean, it like it was really like a kind of that over. guy as well. He, yeah, he, um, he's. I believe he's working on like three or four different games. People keep asking me to talk about him. Um, he kind of I drops think... one, doesn't he? Halfway through, then jumps on something new, and everyone's like, "Well, I want the other one you were making." And he's like, "No, I'm doing this now." There's a few. I, 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 is he the takedown guy? Uh, yes, I think he is. Yeah, yeah. Nineties yeah. arcade racer was the one I was looking forward to. It just looked like sort of uh, it looked like Scud Race or Super GT on the on the, the uh, Sega uh, arcade. Uh, that's my favourite Sega arcade classic. I, I prefer it to like Daytona and stuff. Yeah, like it never actually come out on console. They made yeah. a, they made a Dreamcast um, demo. Uh, to demonstrate how powerful the Dreamcast was, but it never made it into a game. Um, and it just runs stayed in the arcade. But you can play it now if you get the Super Model, Model 3 arcade emulator, which runs the Model 3 games really frigging well. I'd recommend anybody to try out Scud Race or Super GT, it's called cool in Japan. Really good. Very, it's like a mishmash of like Daytona and um, 
Sega Rally and, and like Outrun, isn't it? It's, it, feels, it feels perfect. It really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. With zany, like sort of underwater bits of tracks and mm-hmm. over, like, you know, really elaborate scenery and colourful. It's just awesome. Yeah. No, uh, there's, I'm just looking at you got the takeover on Steam. Um, it's really, I think that's the one he's focusing on the most. At yeah. The I don't know what happened to Nighty's Arcade Race. I think you just uh, said something about he couldn't play the developer anymore or his, or his programmer. So he just kind of just gave up. And it's it, a real shame. It is a real shame because yeah, like, he's obviously an incredibly talented guy because he's he's he's, he's on all of these games that everyone yeah. wants. Yeah, and yeah. he, he sort of released sort of footage of the game running and everything, so he obviously got pretty far into it. But yeah, he just yeah, it of, looks fantastic. It really does. It looks great. Um, and, um, I was really looking forward to because they don't make racing games like that anymore. No, they don't. They don't. Um, and that's, that's the thing. That, again, that would be something if it was released PlayStation One ish era, like Sega Saturn. Obviously, yeah. we'll that sort of things. But that would be a full price game. And nowadays, I know we're going right back to our conversation now. That would be a download title. You know. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect for a Switch. Yeah, I will exactly. play Tenor for that. You know, for a sort of four track. You know, twenty minute quick little jump in, jump out sort of game. Um, yeah, that would be amazing. But yeah, maybe he'll, he'll resurrect it and jump back into it because. Okay, so I'm seeing uh i've just typed it in on gamepressure.com uh where you can look up the the uh the, the developer of uh, pelican 13 and you can look at his completed and released games and there's only one on there and it is my arcade racer for pc and wii u and right next to it, it says cancelled <laughs> the completed game the one completed game he has is cancelled Yes, so yeah, pretty complete. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't sound like, like it. Cancelled is pretty incomplete, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, I mean, the developer that was working with him, I think, just uh, I think you know they couldn't be bothered with it anymore. He just left it and he, he jumped on something else. But it looked great. So, so I think that would have uh, the market of people like us who are into like nineties, you know, three track, you know, twenty minute arcade style races. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no one to compete with on that apart from down the, the Daytona download on. That we talked about uh, uh, earlier. <laughs> That's like the only thing, really, that you could kind of buy, unless you go and buy a Dreamcast or a Saturn, or you know, um, like Ridge Racer Seven. Really, which Stu we were talking about recently, mm-hmm. isn't like for the last arcade, real dedicated arcade. Now you got a Need for Speed, but just you know, just pl- hammering through races. Um, that's the last one. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate. No one's bloody making these games. We need to start a Kickstarter. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's Everyone, is. Everyone is. I'm Who's watching this shit. <laughs> and you're you're at Sega all the time. Tell them to like bloody Scud Race on Switch or, so, or something. Yeah, it's uh, Sega. Sega are brilliant. No, it's quite funny when I go up there. Uh, I'm going up there again next month. Um, next month? Yeah, next month. It's not February yet. So next month. Um, it's quite funny because they they, they, they they talk to me so openly and freely and they just, oh, yeah, we're doing this and we're doing this and we're doing this. And I'm under NDA, so I can't say any of it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And it's, like, really awesome. And they're, they're, they're just, like, it's if, like, you're talking to an old mate down the pub and they're just telling you these cool things. Like, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. They're like, um, and then... Uh, Dan, Dan, we've got the Dreamcast 2 in development, but don't tell me, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, they tell me all these really cool things. Um, and then um, I was like, so, so, yeah, so what do you think about this? I think, and you're like, okay, here comes the marketing talk, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you totally yeah. differentiate the two, but uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's cool. But I'm looking at that 1990, 90s arcade racer again as we're speaking. I'm just like, oh, man, that's such. So, a shame. so with Sega, obviously, yeah. without telling us any names, there uh, there are some good things to be excited about in the next twelve months. Mm. Yeah. Tell me what you know. Yeah, and yeah. they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, we're going to read, we're reading between the lines, Dan. So I think what Dan is hiding, Dreamcast Mini for definite, for definite. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Another compilation of all the Sonic games. I make, I make it sound like I know a lot. I, I, I generally don't. I don't think I know anything now that isn't public, but I can't say in case it isn't. I, I, mean, think, I think everything is public now. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, me and Kim are actually going up there, like you're saying. Uh, Kim, yeah, me and Kim working together all the time, and me and her are going up there in on the twenty fifth or twenty. Lucky gits. I mean, we live in, in me and Stu live in London, so you know, it'd be a piece of piss for us to go if we ever got invited. But I guess we just need to uh, make more Sega con- content. I guess that'll probably. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, yeah, in cheap, mate. No, <laughs> bag a little bit. There isn't much wrong they can do in my eyes. That is a little bit bad. I'm a so little that bit Sonic bad. racing game, that that Sonic 
team racing, team racing. racing yes yeah that looks actually that looks pretty good well it's um uh sumo digital isn't it the same people that did the other all-star yeah and that, yeah. Uh, those are like mario kart competitors out yeah. 2006 that was so yeah they did that as well yeah. absolutely um yeah brilliant um i've actually got a business card next to me with a sumo digital logo on it i've never used it but i just like to have it you know yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quality, quality. Sonic yeah. R remake need that, um, and you know, light gun games. I need like um, obviously there are ways around that now with like sensor bars and, and yes. stuff. Some kind of compilation of the Namco light gun games and the Sega ones. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I don't know how you'd make that work on a Switch, um, but maybe you'd have a you know, clip on a little bar onto the screen or something and use the jo the, the Joy-Con as a guy. Oh, you got yeah. that? Yeah, you got the little sensor thing in the Switch controller, haven't you? In the it's, joy yeah. I can't stand those bloody Joy Cons. I, I don't know about you guys, but they they really don't connect too well. They they for me they constantly lose connection because it's Bluetooth. It, yeah, it's always like flaky. If it was two point four gigahertz, you know, like a three sixty controller. But the uh, thing is, it costs so bloody much to buy those things. And yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, rip off. I'm, yeah, they really are. I'm I'm buying. Uh, is it Bluetooth in the Pro controllers as well? It is. Yeah. Oh fuck it! I might not bother them. <laughs> I've, I've, I've found them pretty reliable. The Pro Controller, right. the Pro, Pro Controller, that that never disconnects for me. Yeah, uh, uh, you would probably be okay with <clears> one of them. It's, it's, I mean, it's got a bloody D pad for starters. Yeah, I mean, I've got a um, uh, Pro Controller, but I, I hardly ever use it. And then when I do, I, rem I remind myself about how good it is. And it's the same with the Switch. Like when you plug it into a telly, you're like, God, it does look good. Because mm. exactly, yeah. I mean, for me, I'm so used to playing it in handheld mode. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of the, the multi-plats I end up buying on the Switch now because I know I can mm -hmm. take it with me. You know, like Street oh, Fighter Collection I got recently. I've got the Switch for, version so I can just, you know, get it off the dock and play it in my bedroom, take it to work. It is I awesome, got, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you pay like 20 quid more a lot of the time for a game. <laughs> but I kind of think, well, you know what? I'm going to be I'll be able to play it anywhere. So, yeah, I'll chuck in the extra. It is genuinely quid. one of my favourite systems. And when they like... Yeah. Oh my god! Another another remake or another re-release of like what is it like? Misplosion Man's coming out. Oh god! Yeah, all those like, um, um, like keep doing it. Just keep putting them out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want as much selection as I can get for that system. I really do. Well, um, we were, sure were talking about you know things it should do, and one was um to bring out some of the sort of three sixty PS three generation games. <coughs> yeah, the they bloody are. The Assassin's Creed three's coming out on Switch. Meant to win it. Meant yeah. To win. But people will be like, oh, that's cool. I could play that on a handheld. That's amazing. I would love to have done that back in the... It's kind of that appeal. GTA Five. if I could bloody bring that out on the Switch. So I mean, Rockstar clearly make games for the Switch because they've done it. So just bloody... Was it L.A. Noir? Was it L.A. Noir, yeah. 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 a good game, but, you know, Grand Theft Auto was way... Yeah, like, come on. Out of the games you could have put on there. Yeah, they could make a, they could make a bloody GTA Five pack, you know, and be like, oh, they don't put those games on Nintendo. But, yeah, there was Chinatown Wars on the DS and... So, you know, it's happened, but, yeah, anyway, we can, we can only dream. What's amazing is if, like, they, they, they completely trolled everyone. When they started, like, doing uh, Rockstar, started changing their logos to red, when everyone's like, oh, my God, this is it. They're going to announce Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then suddenly drop the fact that, yeah, we're going to make a definitive edition of the original uh, Red Dead Redemption for the Switch. That would have been the greatest troll, but everyone would have <laughs> loved it. And then, like, day later, oh, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> yeah, so well, they have trolled us with just bringing out LA Bloody Noir on, the, on mm. the Switch, you know. But yeah, I, I, mean, I didn't get that actually. Apparently, it wasn't it was a bit of a glitchy mess, wasn't it? From what I hear, um, I but you know what? No, yeah, it could be right. Yeah, I've, I haven't played it, but the thing is, I already played and completed it on the PC, so I've got no desire to, to, to get it for the Switch. But you know, something like Grand Theft Auto, even though I've completed that as well, five, I, I would quite happily buy it for the Switch just to have just be able to fuck around and, and blow shit up on like the toilet, and, and they could do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I've bought Graph Auto 5 twice now, 360 and the PlayStation 4, and exactly, yeah. I'd buy it again on the Switch. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, at least you I mean the Switch is kind of in between like a PS4 and a 360, so it'd run for pretty would decent, you know, or on a Switch. So yeah, it would. there's nothing, there's nothing really stopping them. Um, yeah, but oh my god, I mean, I think they just don't want the money. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like money, do, do they? So it seems. Yeah. A time, but... It is a shame, but uh, no, I, I, I love my Switch. Have you actually seen the uh, Night Trap Special Edition for the Switch? It's enormous. I've got it for the um, I've I've got it for the uh, the PC ver. I, I bought this only limited run game. I've bought um, I bought the boxed PC ver version of it. Is that the one with um, the VHS in it and all that? 
Uh, actually, you know what? It's sealed. I haven't opened it. <laughs> oh, right. It might be in there, you know. I don't even know. I can't remember it's, what it came with. It's hilarious because inside it, they've got a replica. Um, I think it's more of the Sega CD rather than Mega CD, but Sega CD case. All oh, right, with the blue strip up the side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's massive, massive, big, like almost like it looks like a, a two DVD thick but bigger case. And then inside there's this big foam insert of a tiny little square cut out the middle where you can put your switch cartridge. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was <laughs> limited, put it right? in them, you know. Yeah, um, I played it actually uh, the weekend, uh, the, um, the the limited edition, uh, the. Uh, 25th anniversary. I've got the original on uh, the Mega CD. I mean, it's not even it's not actually that expensive on the Mega CD. Like 30 quid will get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. get you that yeah, game. We have a, a cool thing to put on your shelf nowadays because obviously yeah. not really worth playing now that there's the HD version. A game like that actually does benefit from being HD. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, I mean, I mean, the art, you, I mean, you do get the original artwork for front cover art, which I think is better on the Mega CD than the kind of, the kind of made a cool looking filtered version of it on, on the. <laughs> rubbish one that's a photo of um that's a screen capture of the main ca- character and, and, it, you know. and it comes with a uh steel case so that's probably like the 17th steel case i've got that stayed in its box and never actually can held the game that you can put in it if you want <laughs> that's the point uh, of them though isn't it you never actually use them for any exactly, of this stuff exactly i've got a flash i've got it with flashback a steel box right next to the normal case oh, i came out on switch as well didn't, didn't yeah yeah i've got so sonic mania i got for the switch and that has an, a nice sort of bigger ish sort of case it's got a little book with it uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got yeah. the uh, I've got that, and I've got the Japanese import, and I will eventually buy the American one just so I can have because you get the reversible covers, so you can have the Mega Drive, the Genesis, and the Genesis Japanese one. Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah, I really want someone to like make a Saturn version of that. You know, I'm sure it's it's really you'd have to get a de- dev kit and someone that knows how to program a Saturn game. But I, I do you reckon it's time to pull it off. That. I know, like it, it looks like it can, but I don't know if it would actually I be think- able to pull it off. I think it could because it's a it's probably it's a two D like powerhouse. So you'd have to mm. really dive into the two D side of it because there yeah, were some two D games that um you know something like Castlevania Symphony of the Night that got ported from the PS two. It's one of the few PS two two D games, and it was crap on the Saturn because it was kind of it was kind of the, they used the three D graphics of the PS three to kind of fudge into a two D game. Sure. And they ported that instead of just going using the 2D hardware in the sound, which would have made a really perfect version of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think you could. I mean, what's uh, I mean, uh, I can't think of any like I mean, also got Rayman and things like that on the Saturn. But um, yeah, 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 I think it probably could do it. I mean, could you think of a scene in there where it, it might struggle with? I mean, there's that level that's kind of a TV station where you're running through like sections where you break glass windows, and the boss fight at the end where you've got. But even that's just Doctor Robotic scaling in and out as a super scalar type looking thing. The Saturn could handle that easy. Um, but I'm not a yeah. programmer. I could be talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it'd be a push. I mean, it, it potentially could. There'd be some a, say, like, anyway. Yeah, some some people say, oh yeah, no, I'm not seeing Mega Drive version. I don't think Mega Drive be able to handle yeah. that at yeah. all. Uh, I have to I cut it down. I saw the the trailer. The first second, like within the first few seconds of you seeing right, Sonic run around the loop, he's like. Wow, that that looks strange. Yeah, so many more frames of animation. Exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like so. That, yeah, the, the Mega Drive ain't doing that. That's probably it as well, isn't it? The amount of animation just in the Sonic sprite alone. I think even that. Just, that yeah, just, it might not. How much more room that would take up? Like, yeah. Maybe on some crazy EverDrive mod where you can put like a big old fat. I know, RAM like, expansion <laughs> thing on it. Yeah. Get the four meg car or something just to run a Sonic game, which would be a exactly, exactly. idea. But yeah, someone do it. Kickstarter, that's another one. You can make, you've got to make all these Kickstarters. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right, guys, so I think Gold have gone well past our usual hour there, but. Have we? Three Sega fanboys. That's it. What else is going to happen, right? <laughs> Well, thanks, Dan, for joining us. We really, really appreciate it on our no worries, so man. We appreciate that you're working all hours trying to bang out all these crazy videos and for hours on end, and then people only watch the ones that take you 20 minutes to make. Uh, but... no, 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 you know, I, I generally love making the kick scammers. And, and if, if you want to know, the way the analytics works, it still works in my favour. Um, kick scammers, in case you don't know. So when, when, when a kick scammer gets released, it goes, <clears throat> everyone watches it, and then it goes <clears throat> down to about... I don't know, seventy percent, and then it just stays there. Where uh, complete histories go up about about three quarters of that amount, but then stay there. You know what I mean? They don't do as well yeah. in the long run. They do. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Isn't it there you go. A little That's bit of an analytic there. there for you, which yeah, I'm not probably shouldn't say, say because that's, you know, it's against the YouTube rules. Dan Ibbotson behind the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the H1 special coming soon. <laughs> right, so Stu, where can you find us? Right, you can find us. We're on uh, YouTube under Console Shock. Search that. Uh, Facebook, Console Shock again. Uh, we're on Twitter. Search Console Shock. And you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher. Again, search Console Shock. Um, and Dan, I- I'm sure everyone who listens knows where to find you but where... it's insane that people think I'm big it's, it blows my mind I don't feel like I'm a big YouTuber in the slightest but yeah, yeah if you just go to anywhere Google, YouTube anywhere you want Twitter Instagram now I'm trying to push up my Instagram so please people follow me on Instagram uh, anywhere anywhere like that Patreon any of the other places <laughs> just type in the word Slopes Game Room and you will find me so yeah check out Dan's channels on his all his social gubbins mm. and um, and yeah we're going to look forward to some of your new content coming out I knew the kick scammers don't bother watching the history stuff <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for watching our 50th episode we really appreciate everybody that's been with us so far thanks everybody and we'll see you next time cheers bye bye bye